he's going to say that line, will of the people, one million times between now and no- November 20th. So get ready for that. That's his new line, will of the people, will of the people, will of the people. What does that mean? Uh, to put it in more like colloquial language, that means, hey, you do you. Former President Donald Trump put out a truth on his new social media network, Truth Social, and made a big announcement. I will be telling everyone how we're moving forward with the topic of abortion. So he put out a video. It's created an absolute firestorm within the conservative movement. The first thing he talked about was IVF and how he is just fully on board. He's going to make sure everyone has access to that. I put out an entire video on IVF, trying to look at it with a nuanced view, trying to look at it very carefully, understanding and taking into account the incredible emotional toll for people who have fertility issues and that this does offer them something, even offering at the end, maybe an ethical way forward. At minimum, what we can say about IVF is it is in a moral and ethical gray area in a in a very large way, especially if you are pro-life. It is definitely in a gray area. And typically, when we have something in a gray area, we're wise to move slowly with anything in a gray area. But when it comes to issues of life, like whether or not if you have, you know, 10 or 20 fertilized embryos that you end up not using, are those 20 lives? And because this exists in this weird, we don't really know. And some people have very strong opinions on this. But at minimum, a gray area on life, we should just move very slowly. And what feels haphazard is just to go, we're going to do it. We're going to make sure everyone can do it. We're just going to throw caution to the wind. We're going to go for this thing as hard as we can Uh, to pretend this isn't a difficult question. If you care about issues of life is silly. So that's how he starts. And then he moves on to his thoughts on abortion. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is. The baby is born, the baby is executed after birth, is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both, and whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. So this is really where he's going to hone in on what his actual position is. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others. And that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or in many cases, your religion or your faith. Do what's right for your family and do what's right for yourself. Do what's right for your children. Do what's right for our country and vote. So important to vote. At the end of the day, it's all about will of the people. That's where we are right now. And that's what we want. The will of the people. So that's his position is abortion is going to come down to the will of the people. Now, that's packaged very well. He's going to say that line, will of the people. One million times between now and no- November 20th. So get ready for that. That's his new line. Will of the people, will of the people, will of the people. What does that mean? Uh, to put it in more like colloquial language, that means, hey, you do you. And, and really, it's you do you on a state level. But the states are represented by the people and the people put the state representatives in office and then they pass the legislation and the people put the governor in office. And he said, you know, some people will have it very strict. There will be states who are largely conservative and they're going to go down to 15 weeks or 12 weeks or six weeks. And there will be some that, you know, nine months in the baby's almost all the way out. You know, and you decide you don't then they can they can just do that, you know, because it's really it's just the will of the people. You do you. Okay. Federalism is like the perfect system for secondary issues, tertiary issues. However, when it comes to our inherent rights, those are the very few things that must be guaranteed 
all the way at the the federal level, federalism, which is allowing the states to speak and to push power down into the states. That's perfect. Secondary issues, tertiary issues. When it comes to fundamental rights, these must be federally mandated. And when it comes to inherent rights, when you read the founding documents, inherent rights must be protected even if protecting it is against the will of the people. If we have an inherent right to life, it must be protected even if a majority of the people no longer want it protected. In some crazy apocalyptic scenario where 60% of the people in America wanted for once a year us to have the purge and for 24 hours, you can just take out your anger and murder as many people as you want. Wow. If 60% of the people want for and vote for the purge, it has to be taken out. The, the, if it goes to the Supreme Court in this crazy scenario, they have to go against it because our founding documents do not leave room for you to remove inherent rights. And the first right that makes all other rights possible is the right of life. So what's Trump doing here? There is a moral uh, aspect to this, and there is a political aspect to this. And his defenders are saying, look, this is a brilliant political strategy because he needs to win, and the people he's going to lose with are you know, suburban white women, and most of them are pro-choice. And so he's just – he's got to kind of move really far to the center in this. It gives him the opportunity to kind of brag about the, the win he got on the conservative side, which is getting Roe versus Wade overturned. But at the same time, he gets to say to New York, he gets to say to Michigan, he gets to say to Massachusetts, look, you guys are going to do whatever you want. Texas and Florida get to do whatever they want. California gets to do whatever they want. And and, you know, that's fine. Secondary issues. Sure. You know, uh, smoking weed, leave it up to the states, you know, and some people are going to be an all out ban and, you know, jail time. And it's a big deal. And you go to some states right now and it is just like pot city, right? Pot city. Wow. Um, so fine. You know what the speed limit's going to be in your city, tertiary issues. Who cares, man? I mean, there's so many things. I, I, I genuinely believe the more States can own the better. That's not how we live, though. We actually live in a country that's supposed to operate that way by federalism, where the most power is at the most local level. It's not how we work. It's like the federal government takes over everything and everything is big government, except now for this one thing. And this one thing is actually a fundamental right. The government wants to decide who can and can't like rent their homes and how much you can charge for your rent and whether or not you can kick people out, all, all of these proposals for the government. But then when it comes to whether or not we're going to end a life. And so that of course is the argument. If you're pro-choice, um, you may be honest enough to acknowledge that the biological consensus for all of modern science has been that human life starts at conception. Maybe you don't acknowledge that. And so you have a logical case for why you're pro-choice. And, and I definitely disagree with that. And I'd love to have that conversation with you. How However, if you're logically consistent, like uh, a fetus in the womb is not human life and therefore we can end it. And there's my you know airtight argument or whatever. For me, I'm looking at the biological consensus that life starts at conception. We have an inherent right to life. Therefore, you cannot end that life. That's an airtight position. The position that Trump is trying to take is I do believe it's a life and I don't think you should kill it unless your state wants you to. Well, that doesn't work. That's not a logically consistent position. This is what you would call splitting the baby. And this metaphor, splitting the baby, means you are willing to create a lose-lose situation in order to get your way. And he's trying to get his way politically. Okay, I'm not sure that we can blame him. That's what politicians do. That she's trying to get his way. But he has compromised on a stand. And this metaphor comes from a story in scripture. It's the story of King Solomon. We'll read kind of the end of the story. The king replied, this woman says, this is my son who is alive and your son is dead. But that woman says, no, your son is dead and my son is alive. And the king continued, bring me a sword. And so they brought the sword to the king. And the king said, cut the living boy in two and give half to one and half to the other. So here's the setup. There's two women. They live in the same home. Both of them had babies like within days of each other. One night, one of the babies dies. And so there's now two women and one baby. And both of them are claiming the baby belongs to them. And so this is King Solomon, the wisest man to ever live. That This is his way of settling this. He says, just give me the baby. Give me a sword. I'll cut the baby in two. Both of you get half of a baby. Now, of course, it's understood. This would no longer be a living baby because it would be 
in half, right? But Solomon knows what's going to happen. The woman whose son was alive, the real mother, spoke to the king because she felt great compassion for her son. My Lord, give her the living baby, but please don't have him killed. But the other one, who it was not her son, she said, he will not be mine or yours. Cut him in two. And the king responded, give the living baby to the first woman and don't kill him. She is the mother. He knew that the mother would actually have conviction and would be unwilling to compromise and would actually be willing to lose what she wanted in order to stand by her principles. She would lose what she wanted. She'd let someone else raise her baby in order for her baby to be alive. Splitting the baby means you are willing to create a lose-lose situation in order to get your way. When it comes to fundamental issues like the issue of life, how should we think about this? And I'd love for you to tell me in the comments. It's like, hey, we got to take an incremental approach. We got to get wins where we can. Trump has to change his method. He can't come in guns a blazing on the pro-life side. He can't be like talking about a federal ban and all this kind of stuff. I think politically, just statistically, you are probably right if that's your case. Now, um, I am a believer in God. I think God gets to have his way. And I think being faithful to what God has asked us to do and how he's asked us to believe and how he's instructed us to deal on issues with this, um, I do believe in a world where we can stand by our convictions without compromise and God will give us victory. I believe that. So maybe you don't, or, or maybe you think I'm like, you know, uh, out in left field somewhere, or I've lost my mind. I do believe that's possible. Do I understand the political argument? I do. And maybe you can make it even better than I can. At the same time, on the spiritual side, on the moral side, on the ethical side, um, I don't believe we should be compromising on issues that are this clear. Um, when it comes to fundamental issues like this, here's how I would say it. We should be willing to change our methods, but never willing to change our mission. And so what would what would that have actually practically, tactically looked like for Trump in this situation? What I think this would have looked like is a very different rhetoric that's very clear about life, very clear about what abortion is, that the baby in the womb is a human life, that it has value, that we live in a system where what's supposed to happen is federalism as much as possible, but still holding up the hope that something can happen, that hearts and minds can be changed or that policies can be changed. But here's where we are practically. Roe v. Wade was overturned and now it's back into the states, which means if you're pro-life, you have got to be at work pounding the pavement in your states. Roe v. Wade was step one, and now we have to get more and more steps in place until possibly someday something could change at a higher level. Now, maybe you're saying, look, that would totally tank his, his chances, and he would lose a lot of popular support, and maybe you're even right about that. But what does it mean to stand for our convictions? And is it ever right to metaphorically split the baby, to try to you know, have your cake and eat it too. And I do think this is what he's trying to do. He's trying to move to the middle. And I think it's just a lose-lose because on the conservative side, people feel abandoned and people who have put their, their life work into trying to protect the unborn. And they thought they had the most pro-life president ever comes out and basically says, look, in New York, if they want to kill him till nine months, it's just going to be the way it is. It's the will of the people. You do you. They feel abandoned. At the same time, he is in effect the most successful pro-life president of all time because of the judges he put in place to overturn Roe v. Wade. So I don't think he's recapturing those who are super pro-choice and that's their one issue they're going to vote on. They're still not going to vote for Trump. I don't know what this really does for him except show that he is willing to compromise on some of the most essential issues possible. And when it comes to over the last 50 years, 60 something million babies who have been aborted, I think it is the most important issue in our lifetime. And I think it may be the greatest single act of evil in human history. Those are the stakes. And I don't think you're mistaken to feel viscerally about this when someone comes out and compromises on an issue of this magnitude. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you are subscribed so you can stay up to date with all new content. And if you want early access, exclusive content, and monthly live Q&As, make sure to check out patreon.com slash Clayton Tyner.